Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. At the end of the last episode, I was trying to get the forestry multi-farm to work with Pam's Harvestcraft. So I ended up updating forestry and even Pam's Harvestcraft itself, and unfortunately it just doesn't really work the way I want it to. Again, it will sort of harvest them, but it won't seem to take in the seeds to be replanted, and it also destroys the entire crop instead of just harvesting it. That's not really what I want, so I'm going to take a different tactic for getting Pam's Harvestcraft working. But in the meantime, let's put this farm to good use. There's plenty we can do with it. So I'm going to redo the, uh, the tubes. So I'm going to have one side be a rubber plantation for the rubber trees. I'm going to have two sides be crop farms. And I'm going to have one side be a reed farm. There we go. Let's get this stuff out of here. Okay, see, so yeah, I'm going to plant rubber trees, the reeds. That was louder than I, <laughs> than I meant it to be, the reeds. And on the two other sides, I think I'm going to plant canola seeds. So canola seeds come from actually additions, and their main use is basically making power. You can squeeze the canola to get canola oil, and then you can use that in a generator from actually additions to make power. But it's not quite just that simple. I mean, you could do that and keep it that simple, but you can get more complex with it. It's actually possible to empower them. So you see there's normal canola seeds, but there's also crystallized canola seed and empowered canola seed. So you can basically put the canola and the canola seeds through a whole process that makes it much more powerful and you get a lot more power out of it in the generator. So I'm thinking that might be my next step for power generation, because I am not quite overdue, but I'm, I'm definitely due for a power upgrade, both in terms of power generation and also just the power infrastructure, since everything's still low voltage. But that's a little bit in the future, I'm not going to be handling that this episode, I just want to get the stuff planted. Alright, I think I've got it all planted out. So let me show you what we've got going on here. So we've got the two sides that are the canola seeds. Got them all planted completely out, filled out with seeds, because it's been going for a little while. This side is the reed farm, which unfortunately a lot of this is unusable space because it does have to be next to water. Uh, but still, it's going to be managed automatically, so I'm sure it'll add up over time. It's not like I have a huge need of reeds at the moment. It's just something that's nice to have, so you kind of always have a source of paper and or sugar. And then this is the rubber plantation. Now this requires a bit of explaining. <laughs> okay, so how it works is, you know those little uh, things that you tap on the side of the rubber trees that pop up? That's what it operates off of. It basically automatically taps those and takes it into its inventory. So that's why these are all staggered. The reason they're staggered is because if I just put them side to side, so that they had no kind of free space at the cardinal directions. It wouldn't be able to develop those little holes that you can tap. So it needs each cardinal direction completely free. Which is why they're done in this pattern. So each one's free, and I also ended up having to take off all the leaves. Both because hopefully taking off the leaves gives it more room for those holes to appear. But also mostly just because, um, aside from just being... A bother and kind of encroaching on the other plants. It also prevented the other trees right next to them from being able to get very high. So like the leaf, the leaves from this tree for example would be over this one and then when this one grows it might only be like too high and the higher it is, the higher it is the more likely you are to have, well you have more opportunities for these little things to appear. So yeah that's why they are as they are. I'm eagerly awaiting for when it takes those. It doesn't seem to take them... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it doesn't take them right away. It gives it a little bit of time before it starts taking them, but... We've already gotten 33. Also, another thing worth explaining is I had a little bit of trouble. I just had to use trial and error to figure out exactly what constitutes one-fourth of the farming space. Right, because you assign what you want to farm in one of the four 
quarters. But what the hell is a quarter? Because of the shape of it, it's a little bit hard to figure out what's a quarter. Um, it looks like it goes counterclockwise. So... Oop. So this quarter on this side of the machine appears to start at this line and go all the way this way. So it starts there, goes all the way this way, and it continues all the way to the right. So it goes kind of like counterclockwise, right? Like, starting here, it just goes all the way counterclockwise, and then starting here, goes all the way counterclockwise, and so on. So that seems to be how it divides it up into fourths. I haven't seen it actually harvest the sugar cane yet. I'm hoping it only does that once it reaches three high, which is the max height. Because otherwise it just doesn't work, because it hasn't harvested any at all. Yeah, unfortunately I can't speed up the growth of the sugar cane. Sugar cane cannot accept bone meal. So I'm just going to have to wait a little bit and see. But anyway, so that's the farm mostly done. Obviously I need to put in some processing for actually exporting from this thing. I need to export the sticky resin. I need to export the canola. Um, I also need to export the canola seeds and also feed the canola seeds back into here. So by default the seeds go in I think here, but you need to feed them back into here because this is basically the export and this is the seeds to plant. So for example, if I... Oh, it's nighttime. Uh, I'll just set it to day real quick. I don't feel like going to sleep. So if I break a bunch here, it's not going to do anything because there's nothing for it to plant. However, if I take these seeds and put them here, Yep, it furiously replants them. So if I want this thing to replant, which obviously I do, I'm going to have to take some of the seeds and put them back into the machine. But I'm going to wait to set that up for later. Right now it's not exactly producing stuff super fast. It's going at pretty much natural growth speeds. A little bit of boost from the worms. And uh, in the future, if I do need to speed this farm up, um, I could obviously use the greenhouse glass once I'm able to actually make that stuff. But another way which would probably make it super, super fast, and I've done this in the past, is there's actually a Batania flower that allows you to speed up growth. So once I get more into Batania and get stable mana generation going, I should be able to speed all this stuff up extremely fast. I, I mean, I don't think... Uh, I suspect the increase in growth rate would not have any effect on the rubber wood. I don't know how that works. It, it probably wouldn't have any effect. I don't think it would have any effect on sugarcane, although I'm not sure. But it would definitely work on the canola seeds. And if I do end up using canola seeds for power and I need a ton of them, that'll be a good solution. Anyway, so done with the multi-farm for now. Now, let's go into some of what I plan on doing for Pam's Harvest Craft. So this is my basic plan for Pam's Harvest Craft. Because all the farming solutions that I've seen don't really seem to take into account uh, the fact that you can just right-click on Pam's Harvest Craft plants and it gives you the, the plant stuff that you want, but it doesn't break the plant. Instead, it just tends to destroy it and then it's up to you to replant it. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's how you harvest Pam's Harvest Craft. You right-click. What can I make that can right-click? A mechanical user. The same thing that I use to right-click with the bucket on the altar over there to fill it with water. So my plan is to make it so that for each Pam's Harvest Craft crop, like let's say soybean, there's just a single square of dirt, a single block of dirt that has a single soybean plant, and there's a mechanical user that's always right-clicking on it trying to harvest it whenever it's needed. And I also want either the same mechanical user or maybe a different one to also be applying bone meal to it, as needed. Which is why you won't need more than just one block for each plant, because you can just grow it almost instantly. Make tons of it. So I'm thinking mechanical user to click on it. Uh, hopefully endless supply of bone meal, practically speaking. Hopefully, hopefully my mob farm over there makes enough bones that I can make that a reality. And then probably something like a ranged collector to collect the, the plants that drop. That's my plan. Let's see if I can get the infrastructure and everything in place to actually make it work. So, 
First thing I want to do is get my bone meal supply up and going. At the moment, my way of making bone meal is taking bones and putting it into the macerator. That gives me four bone meal per bone. But I was looking at other ways to do it. Ways that are hopefully faster and more efficient. And there is indeed other ways. Um, if you throw a bone into a crusher, it gives you six bone meal. But I don't want to have to make a just a huge crusher just for making bone meal. So I was looking at the pulverizer. It's another thermal expansion thing. The pulverizer also gives you six bone meal for every bone. And I'm pretty sure it'd be reasonably fast. Especially since it's upgradable. It's totally upgradable, so if it's not fast enough, I can always just make it faster. And it's nice and compact, which is what I want. Don't want a huge machine to just do one little job. So I'm going to make the pulverizer to hopefully process all the bones I'm getting from my mob farm. Got everything here, ready to make it. Just machine frames, some reception coils, some gears, stuff like that. And I also want to upgrade it to make it faster, so I've already made a couple hardened upgrade kits, which I've made before. Um, however, I want to get actually the next tier of upgrade. So the next one is, was it reinforced? Yeah, reinforced. That uses Electrum gear, easy. Electrum just silver and gold. Uh, golden Electron tube, easy. Hard part is Lumium. So Lumium comes from Lumium Blend, which is a blend of tin, silver, and energized glowstone bucket. That's the thing that I had to look at and go, what the hell? What, what's energized glowstone? Turns out it's made in the magma crucible. So I've got a, a magma crucible over here for lava, which by the way, I just short-circuited this thing because I, I just haven't tried to figure out the problem yet. But yeah, the lava just goes directly into here now. Just for now until I figure it out some year. Uh, but anyway, I made another magma crucible, one not for lava. This one. Um, yeah, you just throw a glowstone into it. It melts it and turns into energized glowstone. But I'm also thinking, what if I run it over to this thing and give this a recipe for it? Be pretty handy. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. All right, ran a fluid tube in the back to the fluid router. The fluid router, which doesn't seem to work. Didn't work with the lava anyway, but I will keep trying to use it. It's not going to fill it up at the moment, though, because I don't have the energized glowstone in the router. To do that, I'm going to need to do something like... Whoop. How much did I get? Wow, that, that was really fast. I just wanted one bucket. It's fine, though. So grab a bucket of it. You notice it's upside down. I think I've seen this stuff used before. I'm pretty sure it floats up into the air. It's like some weird reverse fluid. I don't know why. I guess because glowstone sticks to the ceiling. Glowstone is upside down somehow. What the? Why did that turn into glowstone? I've never seen that before. Goodbye. Yeah, every time we've seen that fluid put down, it always stays a fluid. I don't know what turned it into glowstone. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> That's really cool, though. It's actually... Not only is the bucket upside down and it goes up when you place it in the world, but it also goes from the top down in the fluid tank. Neat. Right, so when I put this in the filter, it should flow through. Yeah, there we go. Alright, it's going to be super easy to make this now. Oh, is that all that's in there? Oh, yeah, it is. Alright, so let's put this back in the machine. I'm going to set this to input. Say, push. Can you not put fluid into... A magma crucible? Maybe you can only take it out. Hmm. Alright, well we should just be able to push it into the fluid pipe. There we go, it's going. Slowly, but it's going. Okay, so what did we need for Lumium again? I think it was like silver and... Lumi... Lumium? 
Yeah, lumium. 3 tin to 1 silver. It's gotta be dust. Alright, let me go make some. Oh, while that's going, I do want to mention that I, off camera, I did do some very minor automation. I just set up a chest that feeds into the powered furnace, and then also one that extracts from it. And I did a similar thing over here with the bloomeries. So I set up a chest here that just has a bunch of the forge hammers. So every time that these run out of durability and get destroyed, they'll get replaced. And I also set up ones that extract the ingots into these chests. Nothing big, just some simple automation. Oh, it also, it does turn out uh, a long, long time ago when I was trying to extract from these things. If you remember, I put the extracting node on the front of each and it was pulling out the ore that was going in here. I was thinking I needed to make an item filter, and I tried that, but it didn't work. It turns out, it looks like they're set to only extract the ingots from the bottom. So if you just put the nodes on the bottom, then it just extracts the ingots, even without a filter. And that's the only way you can get the ingots. No other side allows you to extract the ingots. So it's a side-dependent thing. Alright, let's grab this silver. If we throw these in, it should start making it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to start making it. Have, I don't even have a recipe. If I set a recipe, it should start making it. Three tin on top. And a silver. And one of these. There we go. Yeah, that's so much more convenient than individually getting a bucket myself every time. We got aluminum, yes. Is this thing empty now? Yes. Alright, I'm gonna get that smelted and turned into gears, or no, not gears. It was plates, right? Yeah, turn it into plates and then I'll be right back. Okay, what the hell is happening with my hang glider? So it's been relatively expensive to repair. Sometimes it's taken about 13 levels to repair this thing. But now look at this. I can't do it, because to repair it to almost max would cost 34 levels and I only have 33? Why does it want so many levels? Is it getting more expensive as time goes on? I don't get it. I'm gonna let it break and see if the cost changes. I don't know. I don't know if the cost is like, randomly generated or something. It's weird. Eventually, any sort of experience cost is not gonna be much of a problem, because um, I can set up my mob farm to extract experience. And then I'll have practically unlimited experience, but there's also gotta be... I know there's like item repairer stuff that could repair using energy, I think. Yeah, so there's this. Uh, it takes those empowered diamantine crystal blocks. Which requires a shit ton of diamonds and the empower. Again, I could probably do that, but it'd just be kind of expensive. But yeah, I think that would repair items such as that with power rather than experience or anything like that. So that's another way I could solve the issue. Just going to go ahead and make three because I'm sure I'll want these in the future for other things. Okay, let's test the pulverizer out. I want to see how fast it is with bones when it's upgraded and also if I'm going to have any power problems. I probably will. Need to upgrade my power network. Just test it out right here. Ooh, some sides are red. What does that mean? Oh, it's color-coded. This is probably byproduct. The yellow one. Anyway, uh, so maximum power at the moment, 20 RF per tick. Upgrade it once. 30 RF per tick is max. Upgrade it again. 40 RF per tick is max. So again, it should get faster just on its own, and I can make it even faster by putting in augmentations if I wanted to. Throw in some bones. It's pretty fast. And each time it's making six. That's probably fast enough, I think. I mean, if you figure it's probably going to take... Um, on average, I'd say... I'd say generally it takes two bone meal to make a crop fully grown. So every time this makes bone meal, that's basically three grown Pam's Harvest Crops. Pam's harvest craft crops. It's probably fast enough. And again, I can always make it faster, and it's actually not running out of power. 
Cool. All right, that's going to work pretty well. Now, since I want to wreck my power system. Yes, I'll put in the node sometime, don't worry. Yes, I'll put the crusher here sometime, don't worry. Yes, I'll put I'll put in the pathway here, don't worry. Some episode. Anyway, since I want to ruin my power system, this thing can already barely keep up, but let's upgrade it again. Boop. Hm. I hear something. Another one, get out of here. You need to put some torches over there. It's too dark. Yeah, thankfully it looks like they're pretty smart about power usage. Seems like if they're having trouble keeping up, like if the internal storage is not able to stay filled, the power usage will not go to max. To kind of avoid just running out of power completely. But yeah, it's a bit faster. Got 51 obsidian. Slowly but surely. And now a little bit less slowly. Okay, so pulverizer is going to work very well. Next thing I want to make is the mob drop collection system. I don't want those bones to be going to waste. I need to collect them and send them where they're needed, to the pulverizer. And all the other drops to my storage over here. Things like ender pearls and whatnot need to go here. So let me work on that. Alright, I'm going to try using the ranged item collector that I got, but turns out never needed for the astral sorcery stuff. And I'm going to try sending it into a diamond chest. Um... This is going to be kind of loud. There's a thing called, what is it, a muffle? And a sound muffler. Wool and a note block. Yeah, it's easy enough. I'm going to make that so we don't have to hear the enemies dying in front of our faces constantly while we're working on this. There we go. Whoa! How did that happen? Okay, um, I've never used the range collector before. Let's just plop it down. I'm imagining it doesn't work through walls. And I don't believe it needs power. No, so it just doesn't work through walls. It's all right, I'm just put it here. Maybe I need to configure it somehow. Ah, uh, there we go. Alright, so by default it's set up to whitelist, so it'll only collect items that are in this list. So if you wanted to collect everything, just set it to a blacklist and put nothing in here. So nothing's blacklisted, therefore everything is accepted. Alright, I'm gonna have a buffer chest. A buffer diamond chest. There we go, it's working. Only problem with this is that I think it's going to be too slow. It is still collecting items, right? Why isn't it collecting items? Surely something's dropped. After some more testing with the ranged collector, I'm even more confused about why it's not working than before. For some reason, it does not want to take in the mob drops. I tried putting it here, tried putting it there, I tried putting it, like, actually kind of in the room itself. It basically won't collect anything, aside from the one time that it just happened to collect some stuff. But it does collect things, it just won't collect things from inside the room. For example, I wanted to see if it was a level thing, perhaps it only collects directly on its level. But nope. Poof. Poof, it's taking all that. I was wondering if it was a line of sight thing. Doesn't have line of sight to it. Poof, takes it. Okay, it somehow managed to get a couple bones, but like the vast majority of stuff it can't get. Wait a minute. Hmm. I wonder if it refuses to pick up something that's on a vector plate, because it's considered to be moving, perhaps? Let's try this. That's it, isn't it? Yep. 
Huh. Okay, I'm thinking if I destroy these, the loot is going to be pushed just past the vector plates, and I might be able to collect it. Um, and let me try putting down slabs. I don't know if that's going to allow the loot past. We'll, we'll see. Because this should prevent enemies from coming out. Okay. Is the loot going to keep coming, though, is the question. Now that I've put the slabs down, will the loot still be able to get pushed past the vector plates? Let's monitor the situation. Seems to be. I don't see any loot piling up. Yeah, I think it's I think the loot's able to fit in past the vector plates and under the slabs. And no enemy should be able to get through there. Yeah, okay, so that works. Fantastic. Alright, let's try to do some filtering. Let's try to make sure that the chest doesn't fill up and things go to the proper area. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to fully flesh it out, because if I did, then I don't think I would have time for the Pam's Harvest Craft thing, but I'm going to do just a little bit, enough to make it so that I shouldn't be losing my supplies, even if they're not quite going to the right place. So first thing, I'm going to get rid of things that I don't want using a trash can. Some stone, cobblestone, a chest. Super simple. I'm going to use this to get rid of things like arrows. I have no need for arrows. I've already got like 500 or something. That's way more than I'm ever going to need. Uh, I think I better get rid of this. As sad as it is. It's kind of in the way. It's also auto everything's silent here, since the muffler's nearby. <laughs> yeah, all the wood's going to go in there. I'll take that. That's not a normal mob drop. Okay, so I'm going to extract from the chest... And, hmm. Okay, this will. It's not quite gonna work until I get everything set up, actually, but that's fine. And I want the first stop to be a trash can, but before I actually hook it up, let's make sure I get a transfer filter in there. I don't want to throw away good things. Alright, that's gonna be the throwaway. So let's set stuff in this filter that we want to throw away. What do we not want? Cobblestone's not gonna be a normal drop. I don't think I want mana cakes. Do I want mana cakes? That's eh, fine, they're not that common. I don't want arrows. Stick? I don't know if that actually came from an enemy or from me, but assuming it came from an enemy, I don't want that. The dirt probably came from me. I'm not sure. Ah, that probably came from me. I'm going to assume that all came from me except for the arrow. So I think the arrow is the only thing in the list right now that I don't want. I know that potions do sometimes drop, though. Those I don't want, but I don't have any in here to work off of. So it's going to have to wait for now. But for now, we can put the arrows in here. Put that in here. Now any arrows will be thrown away. Of course, what this thing has in it right now is rotten flesh, so that's not going to do anything. So let me set up my drawers. Alright, I've got the basic drawers ready, but we're also going to need a couple drawer upgrades. I'm going to make a bunch of storage upgrade threes. They increase the storage to five times base value, so I'm going to be able to hold a bunch of everything. Pretty simple, gold, sticks, and the upgrade template itself is just more sticks and more drawers. Just lots of wood, basically. And I'm also going to need void upgrades which are pretty much the same, except instead of gold, there's obsidian. Now what the void upgrades do is they make it so that if you try to insert into a drawer that's already full, instead of stopping and refusing the item, it'll take it and just delete it. Sounds like a terrible thing, but it's usually a good thing. In this case, we want that because if something gets full, what will eventually happen is this whole thing will stop up. Right, like this node will try to extract rotten flesh, for example, and if the rotten flesh drawer is full and it can't insert into it, it'll never leave here, and then this will just fill up with stuff, and then this will fill up with stuff, and the whole system just stops. So to keep everything flowing, you really want to use something like a void upgrade. 
Oh, we've gotten some new stuff. Apparently we get redstone. Cool. Alright, so I don't want these potions. I'm going to take this health one, though. I want to use that. Oh, uh... I want to take the filter out, but I don't want this to just <laughs> dump everything. I think it already dumped the rotten flesh. Okay, I'll just... Ah! No! Ah, whatever. It's fine. Okay, what was I doing? Remaking the filter. Right. That's not the right filter. So I want to filter for the arrow and for a splash potion. And I want to tell it... I'm not sure which of these I want to ignore. I think it's metadata, but I'll just ignore both. So ignoring NBT data and metadata, I think might allow it to um, filter for all potions, all splash potions, rather than just this specific potion of decay. I think. Let's hope. Even switching items is quiet. Everything is quiet here. Oh wait, that's not... Ah, oh, that's not right. I think I can just do this? Yeah, good. Okay. That should be good. Oh, apparently we also get a little bit of sulfur. Right, so now let's hook up a long line of drawers. I guess I'll put them... I don't, I, want, I don't want them to be very far away because these transfer nodes are pretty slow. Yeah, I'll put it like... Oop. Not sure how many different types of items we have, but just in case we get a bunch. Now, should be as easy as just hooking this up, and I believe it's going to try to go for the shorter pathway first, so it should try to insert into the trash can first, and then go to the drawers. I think. Sorry, tree. Alright, so we got a rotten flesh in the first one. Now, let's upgrade these drawers. Capacity. Do I really want to upgrade the capacity of mana cakes? I really don't. But I definitely do want all of these to be void. You can see that little icon shows up. For some reason, the upgrading the storage doesn't actually... Give it an icon. Uh, but I believe you can... Uh, was it? With an empty hand? Ah, crap. That just got collected. There we go. Yeah, if an empty hand... Do an empty hand, sneak, right-click, and it shows you... Kind of the, the upgrade view that shows you what upgrades are in it. So you can view it that way, and also if you hold down sneak, it also tells you stack limit times five. Okay, that should be good. Just want to wait a bit for these to fill out so I can... <laughs> get more information about what's going to be in these. For example, this is the mushroom I broke. I definitely don't want that. Alright, I think I've got a setup. I added another transfer node to the chest just to speed up the extraction. I could put even more, but that that's fine. As long as it's not... As long as it's extracting faster than it's filling up, it's no reason to really upgrade it. Yeah, got them all set up here. I ended up adding back a bunch of these drawers because there's even more types of items than I really thought of. Which means I didn't quite have enough void upgrades. But, uh... It's alright, a lot of this stuff... I mean, I'll put void upgrades on it eventually, but a lot of it I'm not going to get that much of it. Like Withering Dust. Don't get that much of that. Glowstone, get very little of that. Sulfur, I've only got one of that. I will, however... Take the void upgrade from you and put you into the bones. The bones definitely need it. 
Yeah, I think it's all good. That's empty. This thing's empty, so it's all flowing fast enough. Oh, I also added a couple extra things to the delete. Just to cut down some things. I did add the mana cake, so I'm getting rid of that. Plus glass bottles. Now... Let me try out the splash potion of healing. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I remember... Uh, who was it that's hurt? Skitty. There you go, Skitty. Yeah, 100%. Thank you for the fur. Alright, let's do some testing with the mechanical user and Pam's Harvest Craft. Let's get an idea of how this is going to work. Alright, so it's facing this way. Soybean is there. Want it to always be on for now. Want it to be... Oh, it's already set to right-click. So just generic click, right-click. Random slot, upper left slot only. Ah, use item on block. Oh, okay, so we're going to need a mechanical user to use item on block to place the bone meal, and then another mechanical activator to probably do a generic right click to harvest it, because as you can see, it's not harvesting it, because it's continuously trying to use item on block. So if I set this back to generic click... Um... What? Okay, maybe it's an aim issue, so instead of being off to the side of the plant, let me have it just directly above it. It cannot possibly miss it. Generic right click. And no setting works, huh? Oh, wait. That was it? Activate block with item? Oh, that's it. Okay, activate block with item. I really don't understand these mechanical users. That doesn't... Like, why would a generic right click not work? If I have an empty hand, and I do a generic right click, it works for me. I'm not using any item on it. But for some reason, it has to be set to activate block with item. Bizarre. None of these seem to be doing anything, so maybe it only works from the side with bone meal? I don't know. I don't get it. But the important thing is it will work, but I am going to need two activators for each plant, which is fine. They're pretty cheap to make. Or not activators, sorry, mechanical users. Each one just takes a lever, a dropper, which itself is just cobblestone and one redstone. And the most expensive thing is the red resonating redstone crystal. But that itself is just a bunch of redstone and an ender shard. Well, I spent a bunch of time mining redstone and a bunch of other things, and we're getting ender pearls from the mob farm. So, shouldn't be a problem. Speaking of which, let's go take a look at how many resources we have. Make sure everything's not clogged up. Nope, looking good. 176 flesh, 219 string, some eyeballs, little bits and drabs of that, gunpowder. 19 ender pearls. Oh, we're really not making ender pearls as quickly as I thought we would, but still, that's plenty. Each one creates eight shards, so it'll be fine. And two sticks, so sticks really are actually coming from the mobs. I'm going to have to add that to the list of things to delete. Alright, I think I should be able to make enough mechanical users now. So I'm going to make 45 droppers. <laughs> and a whole bunch of red resonating redstone crystals. I accidentally put away my levers. Gonna need a bunch of those as well. And 45 mechanical users. Which makes 46, and since I need two per each one, that's enough for 23 different crops. Should be plenty. I don't know if that's gonna cover all of Pam's Harvest Graft, but definitely a lot. And I probably don't need to make everything, although I have no idea how to know what I do need to make. Okay, so let me test one of these working, just to make sure that I know what the hell I'm doing. Let me test one of these working with two mechanical users.
Huh. I'm confused. Now it no longer seems to need another mechanical user. Just with bone mill and use item on block, it seems to be harvesting it. I don't know what happened before, but uh, yeah. Alright, we have enough mechanical users for 46 different crops, apparently. Cool. So this is definitely going to work. Now it's just a question of where am I going to set it up? Um, I mean, I guess around here, since this is the farm area, but I really need to clean this up. All of this farmland with the worms is just kind of weird and empty. Alright, I removed all the dirt around it. The question is, what am I going to replace it with? I could put sand back in. That probably would be the best thing. There we go. Replaced it all with sand, and I also put a rim of sand around the whole outside to cover up the bricks. Kind of makes it blend in a little bit better. I think eventually, if I had a bunch more sand, which I don't really have enough, I'd like to extend this sand out a little bit, and then maybe put sandstone stairs, so that instead of having to, like, jet up here, you can kind of just walk onto the farm. I think that'd look cool. But for now, that's good enough. Alright, let me figure out where I'm going to put the mechanical users and all the Pam's Harvest Craft stuff. Okay, I think I'm going to put it right here. I just took away that level of the sand to make a little bit more flat room, and I also extended out the sand on this side to go into the water a little bit more, so... Get a bit more room to work here, and it still looks pretty natural. I'm thinking something like this. So I'm thinking two wide. So two strips of Pam's Harvest Craft on each side. This block represents the range collector, which has a radius of six. So should be able to collect six blocks out, and these go one, two, three, four, five. So just in case there's a little spillover and it happens to go a little bit out, should still be in the range of the collector. Just repeats on both sides. And yeah, this will support uh, 20 different crops right now. And of course I could always extend it by just continuing the line down, or putting another line back there or here. So I'm thinking of this as kind of the, the module. And if this works, I can just copy it. Okay, let me... Let me think of what to do next. I guess... Honestly, I guess the thing I should do next probably is work on transportation of the bones to over here and set up the pulverizer. Well, my hang glider broke and it still was going to cost like 34 or 35 levels to repair it. So it's far, far cheaper just to make another one. Just leather, sticks, and a bit of iron. My method of transportation of choice is, of course, conveyor belts. Got a couple stacks of conveyor belts, got ingredients to make more if I need it. Gonna put it up on scaffolding. And run it over to the general area to go into the pulverizer. There we go. Look at all my bones going. So it just extracts directly out from the chest here. Or from the drawer there, rather goes all along here. Down here and into this drawer. So I decided to have another drawer here because I wanted to make sure, you know, when we start sending the bones from over there, we don't have any way to know if there's enough room for them over here. So I basically made it so that that drawer over there is just a temporary buffer. And this is the more permanent one. So it automatically just gets sent to this one, and this is the one with the void upgrade. And also with, with a storage upgrade as well. Let me lock that, make sure it can only have bones in it. Alright, so we got our supply of bones. Let me go get the pulverizer and set that up. Just ran this power line that supplies power to the farm over here. And plop the pulver pulverizer down there. Now it's got power, let's extract out. Okay, now that's set to red, so I don't think that's going to do what I want it to do, so let's config the side. That one? Oh, apparently it's that one. I thought it would have been blue. Or maybe blue works as well. Yeah, okay, blue works as well. Alright, so there we go, we got our supply of constant bone meal, supplying it faster than it can process, so that's not any problem. Now I need to extract the bone meal. Yeah, I've got to extract it and distribute it somehow evenly to all the different mechanical users. That might be tough. 
See, I would really, really, really prefer to use the item conduits from Ender.io. That would handle this perfectly. You can set them to round robin. And we can make the pulsating iron nuggets, no problem, but the problem is the conduit binder. To make that, we need binder composite. To make that, we need um, all the stuff we can get easily except for HDP pellet, which comes from mechanism. That's some whole thing. I think you gotta get pretty deep into mechanism. I think it's, it looks similar to rock hounding, where you need a bunch of machines to make a bunch of different chemicals. Like, for this pressurized reaction chamber to work, apparently it needs oxygen and liquid ethylene and a substrate to make the HDPE pellet, so... Uh, I don't know, that seems pretty deep into mechanism. Maybe it's not. I don't have any experience with mechanism, really, but... Definitely not something I can really make right now. So, maybe I'll just make do with the transfer pipe. Speed, I mean, it's dividing them up and also speed are going to be the issues. Now, I can make them faster by using speed upgrades. They're pretty pricey, but I've gotten the stuff together to make some. Nichrome, which comes in the rock hounding stuff. The stony crystals, which is the transformed redstone. And the really expensive part, well, I guess the nichrome's kind of expensive, because it's pretty hard to get. Uh, but the super, super expensive part is the diamond lattice, which is just a bunch of diamonds. So five diamonds to make two speed upgrades. So I've got eight. We're going to see how fast that is. I don't know. It used to be in the extra utilities one that one speed upgrade really wouldn't do that much. But perhaps it's changed in extra utilities two. Don't know. I'm going to try. All right. Well, I've actually had a change of heart. Instead of trying to get the basic um, extra utilities transfer pipes to just work faster with speed upgrades, I mean, that would help a bit, but it really wouldn't solve the core problem. And the core problem is just that the extra utility transfer system is just, it's not smart. That's, that's not a judgment on the mod, it's just that the way it's designed is it's a very good early game thing. It's generally cheap to make the parts, and it is in this this mod pack in particular but it's just not it doesn't allow you to do that much it doesn't allow you to do things very intelligently it's pretty brute force pretty simple pretty straightforward and if you want to do something more complex like what i want to do that is spread an inventory of items evenly across a bunch of other things it doesn't work very well for that so i'm gonna hit pause on this i'm not gonna finish this this episode Instead, in the next episode, and I'm not ending quite yet, I still want to do something, but in the next episode, I'm going to try to solve the problem with a mod called Xnet. I've never used it before, but I did watch a spotlight on it a while ago, and I'm pretty sure it's very powerful and could probably do pretty much anything you'd need it to do. So I'm pretty sure evenly dividing up the item to all the different inventories should not be a problem. So I want to try it. I want to try diving into Xnet. It's kind of pricey. This stuff's all pretty simple, but the pricey part is the machine frame. Takes steel, not that big of a problem. Block redstone, not a problem. Titanium plate would be the most expensive thing. Because that I don't think I have very much of. The only titanium I'm getting is as a byproduct from crushing aluminum. And I don't think I've gotten very much, but I should have enough to definitely do Xnet. So I want to jump into that. And figure it out, because it's always looked like a really cool mod, and I'm going to refresh my memory, watch the spotlight video again, refigure it out. And yeah, it should be fun. Okay, so one thing I want to do right before I end the episode is I've been putting off upgrading my sword forever. It's got six modifier slots, and I haven't used a single one of them. Let's use them. Let's give it knockback, and let's give it some extra damage. All right, that'll give it the first level of knockback. What if I should give it another level? Uh, I'm not going to for now. I'll see how it is. And then let's give it a bunch of damage. So that'll take the damage from whatever it was before. It was like 18 something to 20. So it goes up by a little bit less than two damage each time. Okay, 
Now it's got two modifiers remaining. So it should have a nice knockback, and it should be able to kill common enemies in one hit, most likely. Let's try the nether. I see a wither over here. Let me put a torch in my hand so you can see a little bit better. Haha, -ha, one hit! Ah, damn it. Yeah, nice. I see a ghost. Nice. Yeah, I think it does kill pretty much everything. Any standard enemy in one hit. Ooh, let's try a heavily armored one. Yeah, even a heavily armored one. Okay, I'm in danger. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that sword. And I think something I want to do... At some point, I don't know when, but I have not made any of the Tinker's bows. I've never experimented with them ever, in any mod pack. I should try them out. Yeah, you can choose from a short bow, a long bow, and a crossbow. And there's even particular uh, bolts and arrows for Tinker's, so you can customize your bolts and arrows, not just the weapon itself. Anyway, that's something for some time in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to delve into Xnet.